Hey everybody, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to Pantrio. Uh, in the last video, I took you on a little bit of a tour of some of the basic functionalities of Laravel, but we're not actually going to be using Laravel to generate the front end of our application. That's going to be done with Vue.js, and we're going to get that view into our project via something called Nuxt. So let's uh, let's set that up. Uh, now Laravel comes with some stuff for dealing with Webpack. What Webpack is, I mean, I'm not an expert in it, so forgive me if I'm not a completely accurate here, but in my estimation, what Webpack's job mostly is, is to take JavaScript files and pack them all together and also transpile them from maybe like one language level of JavaScript into uh, something that can be, you know, run in most of the browsers. And, you know, other stuff, there's a whole bunch of different um, plugins you can use for Webpack and you can use it to pre-process your uh, CSS. So you can have something like SAS, which is a higher level uh, style language. You can compile that down to CSS and just that sort of bullshit, right? Uh, and what Laravel does is it gives you something called, let me see if I can find it in here. See, it has something called Laravel uh, Mix which is a, a basically a, a simplification interface into Webpack, where you do mix.js and you specify, you know, all of your source files in here, and it'll pack them all together, all the JavaScript files into a single JavaScript and all the CSS into a single CSS, or if you have SAS or if you have TypeScript, it'll put them all together, bundle them all up into one or a few files. Now we're not gonna be using Laravel Mix, so, go to hell get gtfo and what else i mean let me see if your package adjacent okay so we're not going to be using any of these packages so let's get rid of them and let's get rid of these scripts because these scripts run mix commands but we're not using laravel mix so we don't want any of these in here uh okay so i'm gonna start with a blank slate here uh this is for i guess some kind of Continuous integration. I don't know what style is. I don't care. It starts off in all the Laravel projects. We're not going to use it So let me just yeah, let's just take this moment here to remove everything We're never going to use let's get rid of this readme because I mean we can, we'll add our own readme if we really want to later on But I'm not I'm not too big on them and up in here in resources This is where the stuff the, the stuff that gets compiled the source files go for your JavaScript and your style and generally they get compiled and then they will get placed into public here. Yeah, we're probably going to be doing something different again. But, eh, let's get rid of this here, because we're not going to be using the default uh, Laravel stuff. We'll leave the views in here, even though we're going to be using uh, view.js. We might have some standard dynamic page routes for, maybe for debugging purposes or whatever. Development backdoor, I don't know. We'll leave it in there, doesn't hurt. Uh, so yeah, how do we get Nuxt? Well, we're gonna go. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna make a ln symbolic link to var pantrio. I should probably put is a command into Ansible to make this, but whatever. So cd pantrio, and uh, we want to do npm. Install and I think I can just do install Nux and it'll work, but we'll see We'll see if it exists like this or if it doesn't then I'll just look it up online You can just google Nux and it'll tell you the command you need to install it Now while this installation is running and it's going to take a little while um, Commands like npm and commands like composer when they're installing stuff They're creating a bunch of files and stuff like that they run a lot slower in a synchronized folder than they would if in a, just a, a normal, a normal directory. Uh, so that's one of the that's one of the taxes you pay for that uh, the convenience of having that synchronized folder. But there you have it. Uh, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, while this is happening, let me show you what a standard Nuxt project looks like. Uh, we're not going to be doing that. 
normally you'd run a command and there would be basically a kind of like an install. Like you know how when we ran the composer command to install Laravel, it created all these folders? Well, you can run a command for Nuxt and it'll create a different folder structure for Nuxt. But we're not going to run that command because we already have our folder structure for Laravel. So we're going to have to create that structure ourselves. Uh, and the baseline of that creation, let's look at uh, maybe in here, Nuxty. Let me just see, yeah. So this is sort of what, yeah, this is what the, the folder structure of Nuxt looks like. Uh, don't ignore the Cypress, this is something else. But besides that, you have node modules. That's where all the different packages that you install go into. It's like for Composer, you have the vendor folder. For NPM, you have node modules. Then you have these folders for Nuxt that create different pages. This is the main place where you would be creating all your different uh, pages for your different routes and stuff like that. Uh, plugins, store, this is for Vuex. Well, we'll get into that. We'll be using Vuex, definitely. You can have reusable components assets for I don't know what this is probably like CSS or something like that I don't know but anyways you have you have this kind of structure and we will be recreating parts of this structure inside of our Laravel project uh, but we have installed Nuxt so let's take a look at what has changed there shouldn't be any changes in here but in package.json now we see in dependencies Nuxt has appeared and to start off with, this is all we are going to need. Um, but we now have to add our configuration file that tells Nuxt what's good. And the configuration file is nuxt.config.js. Add it to the source. And so let's go over it. Let's just, I have one here on a different monitor from a project that I know works. And we're just basically going to copy over from that everything that I think is going to be relevant. Uh, so, you would do explore, export default, call like this. It, it uses modules, which you might not be familiar with. If you're, if you're familiar with JS just on the browser, um, but maybe not with Node, then you probably won't be familiar with modules. I'm not an expert on them either. I mean, I'm more familiar with modules in the context of TypeScript. But you know, this is, you don't really need to know how it works or why it is the way it is. You just know that this is what you gotta do to specify your configuration for Nuxt. Inside of here, you got a bunch of different keys and those values are gonna specify different parts. So SSR, server-side rendering, we don't want that. And we're not gonna be rendering pages on the server. We are gonna have the user, the, the client download our JavaScript and then render on the browser. Uh, now, like I said, when you run the Nuxt installer, it creates a whole, uh, yeah, a whole folder structure, right? And since our folder structure is going to be different, we're going to be overriding the places where different files go. So the source directory is going to be resources, not Nuxt. And this is where all those things like the pages are going to go. So in resources, let's create a new directory, call it Nuxt. And all of our source files are going to live in here for Nuxt. All right, next it has this place where you can specify metadata and other stuff that goes in the head of the uh, of the page and there's reasons for why it has a special place to put this mm, has to do with uh, search engine optimization it doesn't really matter for us but we'll put the title in here and you know some meta information i don't know uh, i don't think it's that important to be honest but you know it doesn't hurt either uh, here's a place where you can put global css we'll leave that empty for now but we might put stuff in there later on there is a place where you put your plugins. We're not going to have any plugins yet, but we'll put in, we'll just put the skeleton in here and then we can work with it later. All right. Now there is this key here, sets a setting uh, auto loading of components. So Nux does a nice little feature where normally with Vue.js, you have to specify what components you're going to use in a, it'll make more sense when I get into it if you're not familiar with Nux or Vue. But uh, normally you have to specify the components that you're going to use. With this option in Nuxt, it will automatically pick up what you're using and basically import them without you having to do extra work. 
And which is a which is a beautiful, beautiful place to be. All right. Continuing on, uh, we have build modules. And again, we're not going to be using any build modules yet, but later on, a lot of those that you just saw me delete will probably be making their way back in. And normal modules. I don't build modules. The uh, distinction between build modules and normal modules is not extraordinarily clear to me at this juncture. Um, but build modules, I believe, came in a little bit later. And I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along. Modules are going to go in here or in here. And it might not even matter too much for a lot of them which one it goes into. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Build. Public path. I'm not exactly sure about this one, but uh, we're going to put it in here. And uh, we'll see what exactly I... what the, what it is for. But uh, this one is a little bit more important. Der... Nuxt public. I don't know why I'm typing it in when I could just copy and paste it. It's just right here beside me. But... Uh, from what I can tell, this project I'm looking at here, uh, the the output files will be put into a folder in Pantrio called Nuts, Nux Public. And then inside of that folder, there's going to be another folder called Assets. All right, here, Server. So Nux comes with its own dev server that you can use. You can run a command and it will serve your application for you. Now, we could just serve our application from Nginx, but the dev server is very nice because it allows you to do hot reloading. So when I change a file on my, uh, when I'm running the dev server and I change one of the source files, it will detect that, it will automatically recompile the things, and then in the browser it'll automatically reload the page. So that is, this is just too beautiful of a workflow to give up on. So we're going to serve from the same IP, which I believe, let me just make sure what I want to know where you are at. Uh, I guess the IP would be in the V local, which is 77. I'll just copy this whole thing here and we'll go back here. Okay. So 77 and it's going to run the same IP. It's going to run, but on port 3000, so that doesn't conflict with Nginx. Uh, and that is going to cause us a little bit of problems when we get into interfacing with uh, Laravel, the backend. But we'll deal with it, and it'll be a good lesson. Now here's a little thing that is very good to know about. Uh, and it's not in the standard uh, configuration. Uh, so, like I said, it's going to, the dev server is going to watch for changes to your code and it's going to automatically recompile. But if you have file sharing enabled between the host and the guest, that watching for changes is going to get cock blocked. And so you have to change the way it watches. You got to make it watch with a, with polling. So you got to put these settings into Webpack and that will change the way it watches for changes and that'll work with our folder synchronization. Uh, and that is it. I've got something commented out here. It's not important, but this might work out of the box. And if it doesn't, you know, we'll, we'll as as usual, we will make our way through because we are we are highly evolved primates, and uh, we we solve problems. That's what we do. And those of us who don't solve problems, well, you know, my mom always said, if you're not going to say something nice, you don't say anything at all. So we'll just move on. Uh, so we have the Nux config up in here, up in here, and now uh, let's, I should probably put a, a sing, at least a single page in our resources here, so that, uh, so that we have something to compile. Uh, so I should do a new directory, I believe it's called pages. And I'm going to look into my, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and the page we're gonna put in here, new file, 
index.view. So, view has a cool thing called single file components. And what that means is in a single file, you have your templating, you have your logic, your JavaScript logic, and you have your style. And it's all, it's all wrapped up nicely, it's all cohesive. You keep all the things together, all the styles for one component should go with that component. You don't have all these separate files you have to jump around into, and I like that a lot better. You know, people who love, who are, you know, steeped in the dev environment, they're like, no, you have to separate your styles out into separate files. But no, I understand the reasons for why, you know, separating style sheets out into separate files from your HTML is obviously useful. You can now use that, those styles in a bunch of different places to keep things dry. But when you have specific styles that only ever go in one place, it doesn't make that much sense to me to put it in a separate file. You're not helping anyone. And in view, you get to put all the things that go together, you get to put them together, which, you know, it doesn't, it sounds like a good idea, and that's because it is a good idea. All right, so here's the basic skeleton of a uh, single file component. You've got your template section, you've got your script section, you've got your style section. Uh, so, let's just make a very simple test, and then we'll get this thing uh, tested up. Hello, free. Biatches. There we go. Uh, so yeah, this should be enough. We don't. We're not going to put actually any logic into our script. We're just going to have a single message here, and hopefully this will work. It's probably not going to work on the first try. Hopefully we won't have to spend too much time working out the kinks. Uh, I believe we're missing something though in package.json. Scripts. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I might have, I might have needed to put the Nuxt here in dev dependencies, not dependencies. Although, if I'm going to be honest, I don't think it's going to. It doesn't make a big difference either way. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not. I'm not going to sweat it too much here. But what I am going to do. I'm gonna look at my other project here, my cheat sheet, and I'm gonna copy all of the scriptos from here to here. So we've got the different commands, npm dev, npm build, analyze, generate, start. And private is true. And we're gonna put the name here. Name is going to be Pantrio. Okay. So with this, we should be able to run npm dev and get ourselves up a dev server and then we can connect to that and view our view page. View our view. So, npm dev. npm run dev. Yeah, you gotta run the scripts with run. I knew that. Are you interested in participating. Yeah, you know what? Sure. And apparently, right, builder initialized, client building. So far so good, we haven't crapped the bed and is listing, listening on this address on this port. So if we go to here and we go pantry port 3,000, and there you go. We are in, we're in like Flynn. Beautiful. Now, I'll probably want to install, well, we'll get to that at a point, but at some point I'm probably going to in, into Firefox, I want to install the, uh, the, the development plugin for Vue. We'll get there eventually, doesn't matter. But we have Nuxt, we have the bare bones of Nuxt installed. And it wasn't even that painful. It was less painful than usual. And when we're done here, we can just press Control C, get out of this here. So we've got this set up, and that's where we're gonna we're, we're gonna call it at this point for this video. In the next video, what we're gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna play around a little bit with Vue, show you guys a little bit about what's good in Vue, how it works. And then we'll move on from there. So one video again, like the other, the, the previous video, 
Uh, the stuff that I do in the next video isn't going to actually show up in the end product. It's just going to be a little bit of a tutorial, a little bit of a guided tour. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Click the like button. All's good, and I will see you again with some Pantrio.